You're kind of giving me a conspiracy theory. You know what? I can't listen to this. Mr. Adams, you don't get to dictate stuff this way. Okay. Glencoe versus Adams. You guys need to talk to me. You are Mr. Adams? All right. So here's what we're going to do. I have this set for a final settlement conference. And just while we're all here, what's what's the issue? Your Honor, this is a non-payment of rent case. Um, Mr. Adams appeared at the first hearing and or the second hearing in front of you when I was here and indicated that he had repair issues with right. the uh, bathroom ceiling. And following that hearing, uh, plaintiff's maintenance team went in, did the repairs. Then we came back last time um, and Mr. Adams indicated that um, there were still issues. He wasn't satisfied that there was in the corners of the bathroom, there was discoloration. And so maintenance went in again and corrected that. But Mr. Adams indicates that he is a contractor and it was not, um, it's not to his satisfaction. So plaintiff's position is that these were not reported until we were at court. Once we were at court, everything was done um, properly. And Mr. Adams still refuses to, um, you know, it's still contesting the case, essentially. Got it. Okay. Got it. Kind of a good synopsis of what's going on? Uh, no, Your Honor. Uh, I really, I, like, I don't really have, like, representation, and I don't really know how to uh, put it together as eloquently as everybody else do, but it's just, it's a simple matter of, like, this This was an issue that was brought up last year at first in court in, in um, September or, or October, if I'm not mistaken, and it kind of got swept under the rug then, and I had to to, uh, I got a, uh, I had got, got made came out again in November. Like to show you the, I don't know if it's possible to just show you what was going on with it. It's like it was like hanging this mold there, and they just keep painting over it, and it's like it comes back. Like they, they okay, it's let, me, that, let me ask you this. I just wanted them to just take it out and replace it. You know what I mean? Like all right, they're doing but, is keep putting. But hold on a second. One of the things that I need you to just think about this for. I don't need a comment from you. One of the things is, is that because the determination I'm going to make is not whether it looks cosmetically good, but whether or not it, I, I'm going to be looking at whether or not the unit is habitable. Okay. Now that can mean that it might not look like I want it to look in my house, right? Or something that doesn't suit well with you. But the question really becomes, is the unit habitable? Before I even get to that point, though, is there also then, in, in terms of looking at anything, what did the landlord do when notified? Um, can I? You just yeah, asking me. Ahead. Um, well, they come, they come to court and they saying like that they just repaired and all of that. But I, I have a video. Even the, the guy who came out, he said that, 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 that McKinley doesn't want to do the right repairs on it. And they sent me out to just paint over it. Like I, I have him on video saying it. And it's just basically they're just trying to uh, cover it up. Like like the, it's like you can't just take mold and put paint over it. Like I have a video well, before and it after. Depends. It depends, sir. It does. But it's been evident that it's not going to work because after they did it, that's why I wanted to show you like the video. It fell back down and then the mold is still there and it's exposed. Right. But that was... That's what you raised the last time. And then they Absolutely. went back out. And then they painted it again. So it's like, but all they did was, I, I don't mean to cut you off. I, I, um, I like All they really did is just paint over it. They did the same thing that they did in November. So what my position is, in a couple of months, it's going to be back exposed. The mold is okay. still there. Okay, let me, let me just say that. Let's assume, and I'm not saying that you are, let, let's assume what you're telling me is all correct. Okay. What then do you want to do, uh, or have the court do? Honestly, I was I was asking if they would have somebody to come out and take the mold out. The section where the mold is, it's not, I just want them to take that section out and then replace it. That's it. I'm happy with the apartment. Everything else is cool, but I have four rooms in that apartment, and that one is, okay, is not really used. So he wants the section with the mold taken out. Section of the mold was there was no sorry the section that he was complaining of that had drywall that fell out was cut out and was replaced and was sanded and painted. The other areas that were treated for um, the mildew 
with a mold and mildew type treatment and right. then um you know painted with kilt and painted over so i mean it doesn't it looks cosmetically fine it, there, it is cosmetically fine it is okay there is no mildew this is a bathroom the exhaust fan needs to be used people need to you know make sure that it's um there's airflow in there but plaintiff's position is i mean they've done everything they need to do they're not going to replace the entire you know drywall full ceiling when it doesn't need to be replaced yeah, um, it's not just as simple as that. The, the tub up over me had flooded, and it, this came out since we were going to court when they went to go check upstairs. The tub over me had flooded, so it's just like it was just standing water sitting up over right up over my shower, hey, but, and it was leaking down into there and everything. Let me just ask you this if I say that the landlord has done everything proper. And tell them they don't need to do anymore. What are you going to do with that? Um, honestly, I was thinking that if uh, if you've seen what was going on, I don't think that that would be possible for you to actually be able to say. Am I? I would have to pay not it. An answer to yeah, me. I would have to pay it if it was if you if whatever the judgment is. I would have to follow up the judgment is, but I think that they would too. If that's what I'm saying. I don't know how to explain this right. And so where what is right as we sit here today? What is what is your issue with what they've my, done? My only issue is that it's mold is going to come. I've been living in an apartment for three years. And honestly, this isn't even the first time that this has happened. It's just always just get swept under the rug. I'm happy with the apartment. I just don't want to live That's with what I'm asking. What I'm asking is right now, as we stand here today, it's fixed. No. They just painted over it. Okay. Sir, I mean, are you, are you, are we call them. I think they use kilns. I have a video they did. Right? They use just regular paint. I'm, Pardon? I'm, can I speak, sir? Uh, I, I did. Take, that's why I would like to just show the evidence that I have. I took a video. It's a video of the guy doing it. He explained that he's only using paint and he just put paint there. Like it's the whole video of it. The guy said he's, they told me to just come paint over it. He used regular paint. He didn't use any kills. He came with a bucket. Of, I have a video. He came with a bucket of paint and painted over it. And that was it. He just made it to where to look like it's okay. And it just basically just, it makes me look discredited that because I'm still there with mold. And well, in a couple months, it's going to be the same I, issue. Sir, right now, how do I know that there's mold? If I went over there right now, how would I figure that out? Um, if you went and scratched, oh, <laughs> you scratched so your finger. So I have to go paint. underneath. Yeah, the paint, yes. Honestly, yes. Right At this point, yes. But how is that harmful for you? Because, um, like I said, it's, it's, it's just keep coming back through. Like, um, it, but it hasn't. Well, it has coming back through. That's why we're here. No. What they have right now no, has no, no, no. 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 Since their last repair, it no. hasn't. No, it has not. Okay. No, it has not. Since the last repair about a week or two ago, like a couple weeks ago, no, it has not. So and that, if that be the case, and if that be the standard that we're going by, then. Well, sir, it's not just the standard we're going by. It's like if the landlord comes in and let's say, let's take it out of this, but let's say a pipe burst, right? Yeah. Landlord comes in, they fix the pipe. For whatever the reason, two weeks later, the pipe burst, right? Correct. Landlord comes in, they fix the pipe. You can't then just hold up saying they need to do something so that these pipes don't burst. I understand that. Because the landlord, they're not, they have to provide your unit that's habitable. They're not guarantors of everything that's going to happen in that unit. Right. They, because they, I mean, there are certain things they have to do to make sure. I mean, they have to do some preventative stuff, but there's nothing. They can't. They can't prevent everything. Right. And sometimes, the only thing that can happen is I have to wait. I've done a repair. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. Use the tenant if it doesn't work. I have to let them know it doesn't work. Sometimes in units. 
for whatever the reason, you're going to have recurring problems, right? And yeah, sometimes it's just where the unit is. Right? It, sometimes there's not a real good reason. Yeah, I'm, I'm understandable to that, and I, I, I'm not. I don't want to make it seem like I'm just trying to be a bag. None of that. It's just like I'm living in a house with mold. I've been standing in this apartment well, for years. Okay. And I just want but, to but here's the thing. I know the I often have to explain this to people. People, nobody wants to live necessarily with mold, but sometimes mold, mold. <laughs> we all live with mold every day. Correct. Right. In different ways. Correct. Right. So sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes whatever. Um, I have to take a shower in it every day and agitate it. That's where it's for like, it? like when you're taking a shower and it's like getting stays, it's getting agitated every day when you when what's it, getting agitated? Um when there's mold in your shower and it's just like and you're going to step into it and it's like it's dripping. Like you know what I mean? When it gets wet, it drips. It gets, you know, like I'm living in that. It's like that's what I would like to just show you the, the, like what I'm talking okay, about. Hold on, sir. It's different. Like when Do it's just you know a bathroom you step into that there hasn't been mold. Because if you do, I want this is yeah, I want to know where it is. This is this <laughs> could be plausible, but when you see it and you know it's there, it's like we can get rid of this. It's okay, not but, okay. Let me ask this. As we sit here right now, it's not there. Right? It's not visible, correct. Yes, I couldn't you couldn't see it. Yes, it's not it's not visible, no. Okay, but it's not there. I mean, right now. You have no idea if the repair that's been done has worked. Well, I, I can say that it probably didn't because they've done it before. And the same thing. No, 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 no. As it right now, you can't say that to me because you I can't know. say that it didn't work. Well, I mean, you might have a thought that it's not going to. Well, someone who. uh it wouldn't be my opinion. I'm not like a a mold expert, but I'm I know. sure that I know. I just know the dangers of mold, and I well, like how you gave that but, analogy that it. But see, um, that's what we're getting. I'm not going to get wrapped into. That. Yeah, I don't want to. If you want to go get an expert, I don't want. You want an expert to tell me that the mold that's there is dangerous mold, then I'll give you time to do that. Well, we can do that. Because I mean, honestly, living in somewhere where so it's you want to get an expert to say I, that I call it Section Eight actually because I'm on Section Eight. I had them that send an inspector out about it, and I'm just waiting on them to okay. send an inspector and, out. And that's the other thing. You also have a that unit has passed inspection. Yeah, and May, last May or June or something like that. So it's time again. Yeah. So are they sending out somebody to inspect? Yes. When? Um, that's why I don't have a date, but I called them about. Two weeks ago, I'm waiting for him to send somebody out. Is there, you guys know anything about that? Or? He is due for his annual inspection through CMA. So it's not due. I called them. Whatever day that was that they came out and did the repair, what that it, was the exact date it was. Do you think it would be in the next month? It was whatever date that was. It was on April 9th, I called them. But since lease expires on August 18th. And you know, I you know, I have talked to Mr. Adam. Plaintiff's position is that there is no mold. They've done everything they can to repair his concerns uh, with the bathroom. Tenants don't get to decide what you know how something is repaired. That's the landlord's. Well, that you sell it maybe more eloquently than I did, but that's precisely yeah. And the pipe example that I gave you is precisely it. I mean, the landlord can't guarantee everything to you. But if the, in the analogy you gave with the pipe, say if the pipe burst and then they just hit the pipe so you couldn't see it was bursted, but it was still bursted and you knew it was bursted, okay. but they I, hit I'm it. I'm not. You know, it I, it's, here's the problem. Yeah. You're kind of giving me a conspiracy theory. I can't. It doesn't, here's the other thing. It doesn't behoove the landlord for the protection of their investment to just not do anything where there's a problem. It just doesn't. 
I mean, they have the people there to replace drywall, to well, do that stuff. I mean, so if it were necessary for them to do, they just do it. They don't. They, 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 their worker, he came and saw the video. He said they can't do it. They have you to hire what? a contractor to do you it. You know what? I can't listen to this. You keep going on what other people are telling you. They fixed it. As I've said here today, right as we sit here today, it's fine. What you're worried about is something in the future that I don't know what that is. I understand what you're saying. I, do, I, to, I totally understand. What you, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Like, I, I so, you come in present today. What is it? Yeah. Like what today, what right is now? it today? You came gotcha. in. You said present. something was wrong. Each present. time that you come in, the landlord went out. They took care of it. Something happened. They went in. They took care of it. They did. Actually, they did. And what you're worried about is I'm going to have this problem again. Yes. Yes. Honestly, yes. So, and you're looking at me sitting here in this robe that I'm going to be able to stop that problem from happening again. Uh, I can't do that. <laughs> I got you. If I had to do that with every tenant that came before me, and that's what I would never sleep. I mean to cut you off, but that's what my misunderstanding. I don't have a representation and I don't know everything. I just you, know you've a done very just, small. No, you've done just small. fine. I, part of my job is I have to cut through what people are telling me. Right. You, you're, you're good. I hear you, right? I just need you to understand that I can't. I, there's, there's not a lot I can do when you come in and tell me I have this problem. Tell the landlord. They go fix the problem, right? Correct. That's fine. I mean, I, and, and here's the thing, sir. You seem like a, a nice young man, and I'm just going to tell you. If you ever take your car to a place, you can't tell them how they're going to fix it. Correct. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I can't tell you. If, right. if I got a problem, I can't tell you. You got to put that part from that company on to do. I, I don't get that. If you put the part on and it works, right, right. And I think you said it best when you said that I'm not dealing in prison. I just know that this is gonna happen again. It and may. It is. It is. Me, I just know it is. It, it is. may. And and that's may land tomorrow. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Honestly, we have to deal in the present with the way that this is right. That, we have to deal that's with the it. I've got to deal with the present. And so, if you're looking, if you're looking at it, so here's what I know, or what I think I know. If the problem comes back and you tell them they're going to do something about it, okay? And I'll just say this about McKinley, and, and it's just true. It's not any bias against them. They're going to try certain things and they're going to do certain things. If they go there a third time and they're getting the same problem, then they're going to look at it and the reality, and they're going to be like anybody else that's using any type of common sense. They're going to say to themselves, yeah, we got to do something else because something's happening that this shouldn't happen again. That's right. right? I understand. And I can almost guarantee that's what they're going to do. They're not going to keep, <laughs> it doesn't behoove them I, to why, keep coming back and just <laughs> doing the same thing. That's why I'll be, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's why I'm looking at it like this. Y'all making millions of dollars. Why you can't fix this it, little patch? No, well, like, yeah, the, why get you whole other thing. But here's the thing. They could be making millions. I have no idea. But what I'm saying is just because they are doesn't mean. Think about it this way. If I'm making a million. If I solve your problem, I make a million in two dollars because I don't have to keep going back and paying somebody. So I wouldn't just keep doing it. Why would I keep doing it? Right? So here's what I think is going to happen. Okay. I think what's going to happen is if this repair works, you're going to be good. They're good. If something happens with it. They're going to come in and they're going to fix it and they're going to try to make it right. Let's assume that for whatever reason, Glencoe is just evil and they don't want to do it. Let's it. No, I know. But let's just assume they are for the sake of argument. 
you're going to come down to the inspection in June or July, and somehow or another, it's going to get resolved. Right. Right? Right. They can't be that bad. You don't want to move. No, it's like not that it. I like it. It's just I don't want to breathe mold when I'm in the shower. You just <laughs> want you just want this one thing. That's it. Not because so, you don't want to breathe mold. You I think mean, when you're in the shower. That's that's it. That's it. You know why? Because <laughs> you don't want to breathe mold at all, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Breathe, you got a phone? phone? Yes. When you get on your phone, go to your weather app, and they're going to tell you that there's mold, all kinds of mold out there. Gotcha. Yeah, Got you me. walk outside, you're going to be breathing mold. Gotcha. Facts. Right. I understand. Them. Now, you, you want me to do something about that? No, but it's not. Like, I can't. Dripping when right. you shower, it's like dripping down on you mold, though. That's a different type of thing. If it was mold sitting right there and dripping down on you, you would move your chair. <laughs> Alan has to stand <laughs> with an umbrella. <laughs> right. But I understand. I understand what you're saying. You so, see what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. So during okay, so we, we're dealing with the present, right? So from the time that it was not fixed back, right? Um, they have a whole lot of late fees on there that they charge. Like I really only owe them $385 in, in my utilities, and then they got like Six hundred and something dollars in these late fees and court costs that we have here, right? So we talking about uh, I've been getting charged late fees and everything. Why I'm in? How much is court. owing on? How much is owing on his account? And then it's like, if, hold if, on. Right now, the balance, um, as of today, is nine hundred thirty-one dollars and eighty-five cents. There is some money in escrow, but the balance is nine hundred thirty-one dollars and eighty-five cents. Um, okay, so I'll ask the question How do we get there? His monthly rent that I have currently is like $14, right? So there's also utilities of $255.85. That's owed from so. Uh, looks like the last time that Mr. Adams was at a zero balance was at the end of November. Of uh, 23. 23. And then starting in December, there was only one payment made of $15. It was made on January 2nd, and no other payments have been made to plaintiff. Got it. So what's there are utilities and late fees. And court costs. And court costs. Court costs are 171. And late fees are 450. Well, oh, $621 is what they Hang on. Hang on. As uh, a late fee, and that's the one that has, uh, a late fee, it looks like late fees were assessed in January, I'm sorry, February, and then March and April. And how much per month? 150. There's a okay. Late fee. Got it. Okay. And Speaking of, okay, uh, yeah, they added all of those in there. No, 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 no. Let's back up a second. Okay, I'm gonna take it. So you've got about four hundred fifty dollars in late fees. Yes. And then you have you said one seven one of cork. Okay. So let me ask you this: Why didn't you pay the utilities? Well, I, I'm under uh. When I came here, all you ordered me was to pay was the was the rent part was to put in okay, escrow. But, but hold it, before you got here, you owed some utilities. Um, they didn't just bring you here just to bring you here. Well, that that was my point. Um, I have like the text messages, and everything. I told them after October when we was going through this in October, and then they because uh, I was in court in October for the same thing. In November when they came and fixed it, they didn't like it was still hanging. That's why I had a like the stuff was still hanging and dripping in November when they fixed it. It was literally the guy left and it was still dripping mold and hanging. Uh, uh. So I didn't pay November and I was texting them, I was telling them since then. So that I was trying to get back to court. Basically, I said like I was trying to get back to court, basically. It just took a long time because my rent only $14. Like I, I honestly I was trying to get back in front of this to make them to fix it because all they did was came and spray painted it and it was hanging down. And your honor, plaintiff's position is that's not true. <laughs> Well aware of the process to file a work order. He did not do that. When they when plaintiff first found out about that there was an issue in the unit and the bathroom was in the court, um, Mr. Adams actually uh, paid his 
fifteen dollars in January and spoke to um, you know the community manager the, that handles um, collection and there was no mention about anything wrong with this unit. He paid fifteen dollars and they had a discussion about the unpaid rent at that time. We talked about this on the sex messages. Okay, but why, Mr. Adams? Why would you not pay your utilities? Because it's rent and utility. It's part of the same. My rent and utility come together, right? It's just it's the same thing. So in order, like it just come together. I was just trying to, uh, I was trying to go to court. Like they don't take you to court till it's over a hundred dollars. So I was trying to come to court. I told them, like I have the text message. Like I've texted them before. I've told them. I went to the office and spoke with the guy. I think his name Ryan or something. Like you can always file a case. Well, I, I, I know that now, but like I said, I don't, I wasn't really all the way aware Mr. of Adam, how to do Mr. everything. Mr. Adams, here's the problem. If I told you right now that you needed to pay to your landlord $311, can you pay it? I'm going to pay it right now. I'm going to pay it right now. Okay. Okay. So why didn't you just at least get that part paid? Because I, I I just paid what I was um what I was ordered to pay as far as when um when I came in with the um with the, when when, we, when you told the escrow you just paid said pay the rent part in the escrow and that's honestly all I paid I just been keeping my money I I got my money I, I'm not um I'm not holding that's I'm not trying to hold back nothing I just was trying to get my stuff fixed I can go pay them right now right. Right, that's why I go right out hold on because right I'm not done with the figure yet because then. Because doing it this way gets you into a problem because you got now, and I'm just talking without any of the late fees that they've assessed, there's $482 that needs to be paid. I haven't taken into account what you put in escrow yet. Right. So you're up around the $450 mark. Gosh. Okay. Okay. Now, and the problem is you're still going to owe some of these late fees. How? Huh? Um, they've been charging late fees while we've been going to court. During, no, during because history. you haven't paid. If you hadn't, Mr. Adams, you don't get to dictate stuff this way. Can I speak? If, if, just listen. If, if you had paid everything, had a dispute, and then just paid your rent in the court escrow, I'd say you're right about the late fees. The problem is that's not what you did. Your Honor, you told me to pay the like when when they when we stood there, you said how much in my March. Rent? Right. And I paid the uh, and that's what they still charge me late fees for March and April. That's what I'm saying. They still charge me late fees for, for they, they charging me these late fees while it's an escrow and we're supposed to be selling it here. They still racking up late fees on me. When if that was the case, like I thought that. Once we start handling this in court, I thought that because they they put me on escrow. Okay, you're all, already man. late for March by the time we got here. You but they put me on escrow. Hold on, hold I mean, on. You hadn't paid in February, as I understand. There was February, March, and April late fees. They put it in the escrow. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so in February you hadn't paid. You weren't yet in court. That was your goal, right? But right? I went. Yes. So in March. You get here, but you still haven't paid everything because I don't order you to pay until sometime around the eighth. But you still hadn't paid because I went and um I went to court in February and they and they put in an escrow in February. Mr. So Adams, I will agree with you that maybe the landlord, because we're in court and I know what I ordered to take off the April late fee. Well, they had already, but you're gonna owe February and March late fees. Well, they had. Uh, what I was saying is they had put me in escrow in um in, in February when I went to court with the other judge in February. He put it in escrow first. He can't do that. Yes, they, they did. you didn't get here until March first, so you didn't do it in February. They, uh, the other judge did because they stopped paying uh, Section Eight. They they say they they notified Section Eight when I, I don't remember that exact first court date, but they Mr. they said. Yeah, I just I hear what you're saying, sir. I hear you. I'm not trying. I'm just talking. I'm not trying to. No, I know. Honest, I'm just trying I to know. explain. I don't get a lot of opportunity. You're doing a fine job. You do a great job of talking. Well, you I'm just listen. Okay. You're going to owe the 300 late. Cool. I suggest, and I, you know, if I were to rule on this right now, I tell them take off the 150, 931, 85 minus 150. 
Right. You have that much? Well, can I speak, say this? Can I say one other thing, Your Honor? Just, I just want to say one more thing. Um, I live in an apartment. I do. I, I can pay. No, no, no. You're not going to answer my question. How much? Go, go ahead. Say something. Can I, can I just want to say something? Uh, like, I live in an apartment that has four rooms in it, right? So if for about five months or so, those four, I can only use three of those rooms. What about the abatement issue? The value of the apartment is not $1,279 a month if it's mold in the apartment in one of the rooms. Is this the, is the value of the apartment is dollars a month? Is it? I'm huh? just asking. You want to move? No, I did not. But I'm just saying if the abatement you issue. You want to move? No, I did not. So you're talking about the value of the apartment. The problem is, did you leave the apartment or have to go anywhere? Yes, I was. I wasn't living there. And everybody knows in my whole apartment, I have a stand with my girlfriend. Where were you living? I was living with my girlfriend from November until, the, until, until February. I was not living in that apartment. I did not. Nobody, everybody in the apartment. I moved all my stuff out. I literally just moved it back. I got a U-Haul. I got the receipts. I definitely moved out. All of my stuff. The, the which we call it the, the the workers that came there. They came. They was like, "What happened to all I your don't stuff?" You're entitled to an abatement. I'm just going to tell you that. Now we can go to trial on this because this is just a final settlement conference. But what I'm hearing is, I don't. You don't see it, abatement, sir. I will have to prove it. You got to prove your part of the case. Yes. I think I could do that. When you want to go to trial. I think I can do that. When is one available? Why? When is it available? Excuse me, would you guys be available for trial? I mean, you're not disagreeing with their principal case because their principal case is whatever. It's really your counterclaim and your trial. No, oh, we better do this soon. You have everything you're going to need ready May 14th? I think I'll be ready. And you understand you're going to be held by the same court rules that everybody else is held by. What is that? So I means I'm not going to hear hearsay. I'm not going to hear any of that stuff. You got to do it exactly like everybody else has to do it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I would have to get like some representation. Have me somebody come and talk like how they talking, or at least get some consultation because I'm getting out talked and out flanked over here. I don't know that you're getting out talked. You're get, the only one that's been out, talking. Yeah, got out flanked. <laughs> then you're out talking yourself. Maybe that's what I'm saying. Maybe okay. Like maybe that's maybe that's the problem. I don't know if trial gonna solve that, but that's just you. Maybe <laughs> like I said, I really don't. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent all the way with this. I'm not, I don't, but I just, I just know I, I, I'm not wrong here. Like with this, this is not right. The way the situation has went, it has got to be some type then of move. justice to, to come move. across from there. That's, that's an option. But McKinley owns everything. I would have to no, leave. They don't. McKinley owns no, every, they almost don't. everything out here. They own 80% of the apartments out there. Other places that I'm living in an apartment. They, they own 80% of the apartments out here. Okay. So that's kind of like, you know. They, they got a big staple of the apartment, so moving would be still. I could move and still deal with them. Why are you angry with them? I'm not angry with them. I don't want to. Yes, you are. You don't want to move, but the place you say they aren't taking care of it. So you got to have it one way or the other because you're not coming to me every month asking for an abatement. I'm not going to hear. Like a bad guy. I'm not trying to be a bad guy. I don't think you're a bad guy. <laughs> this is coming off. I don't think you're a bad guy. Unreasonable, maybe. I don't, I don't not a be bad guy. <laughs> I'm not trying to be none of that. I swear I'm not. I know you're not trying to. You're doing a good job at not trying to do something. Still coming off as big. I, I did not, not say that. Is. However you feel. But I'm just saying. Look, I don't know what you see coming out of this. I just try to give people a, rash, a, a reasonable expectation on what they might see for a trial and the difficulties. That's one of the reasons I set final settlement conference. Gotcha. Right? Because you can think, like you said, when you like puffed out your chest, this now I can prove that. Okay, fine. Now it becomes, you know, if I give you a date, two weeks from now, you got to put up or shut up. Can I give like another week or something to make sure? Can I, because I, I really don't, I, don't, I want to make sure that I got, because I want to be able to talk to the uh, to the legal people and get something like for real. I just wanna, <laughs> what legal people? How I want to go I've talk been to here, I don't people. know how many times you ain't talking to any legal people. I haven't, never. My I've third been, time setting the final settlement conference. And I haven't you talked have to nobody, because I, I thought this was going to be, I thought, honestly, I had a whole different, ex, I, I, I thought it was going to be different. And honestly, and to be honest, I thought that she was my representation the first two times I came here. I didn't even realize that she wasn't representing me uh, until I did. Oh, when no. she called me you the first time, no. I did. Don't even I honestly, try it, Mr. Adams. I'm not trying. No, to, I, I honestly did. I never said that about it, but I Mr. did. Mr. Adams. Honestly, I did. Do not try to tell me that. 
And more importantly, just so that the record's clear, there is there would be no doubt in my mind that Ms. Gazzari would have no way led you to believe, would have any way represented in any way that she was representing your interest as opposed to that of Glenco. Do not even go there. It was I'm my fault. It. It's your problem. It was my fault. For oh, yeah, absolutely. It's your fault. She didn't do anything. I'm not saying Oh, she I know she wrong. didn't. I'm going to tell you that right now. I, I know she wouldn't have done that. She didn't do that. It wasn't her fault. I just, I thought that I was going to have some reference. I never did it before. But when she called me back to talk to me, I thought that she was representing me. I didn't know. Mr. Adams, what do you want me to do? You want a trial date? Yep. I certainly do, sir. Because I think that I. Then uh, you get one, May 14th. Cool. We can get out of here. Thank you. May 14th. 2024, 9 a.m. You better come. You better come ready. Because if I go for trial, you better come ready. Don't ask me for any adjournment. Don't ask me for any favoritism on your side. Don't ask me for any of that. If you don't know how to do something, you don't have an attorney, you don't know how to do something, that's just going to be too bad. You got to figure it out. And you're going to have to figure it out on the spot. You understand the game rules are playing by? We'll see you in two weeks. Wow.